When most people hear the name Colonel Jeff Cooper, they associate it with the art of practical pistol, which he invented, and for that we call him the guru. But what most people don't know is he also worked on a design for a lightweight, portable, easily carried rifle known as the Scout. And today we're gonna to spend some time with it, the Ruger Gunsight Scout. We've noticed a large percentage of our viewers have not subscribed. So if you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications. It's free and you can always change your mind later. Thanks for joining us on Shoot of the Series. My name is Ed Thorell, and we want to thank all of our uh, viewers for watching and giving us good traction. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit the like, the share, and subscribe button. And today we're going to spend a little bit of time with the Ruger Gunsight Scout. And it was the brainchild of Colonel Jeff Cooper, who started the Gunsight Ranch in Arizona, which basically became a university that teaches all different types of skills for pistols, rifles, and shotguns. And Cooper came up with the idea of the scout scope back in 2011 is when he started working with Ruger. And the scout is based on a Ruger M77 action. And I'm a big fan of the M77 anyway, so it wasn't much of a leap for me to want to reach out and get one of these. But we want to talk a little bit about what the scout rifle is and define those parameters. So I want to point a few things out. Now, Cooper's idea of the Scout rifle was to come up with uh, an everyday rifle that was based on practical accuracy rather than firepower. And what it does is it's uh, set up and it's designed to shoot a 308 or a 7.62x51. And he believed that that was the best overall cartridge for North American game, uh, not also uh, ignoring the fact that it's a military round and it's easy to find. So a 308 is a very practical 30 caliber round. Um, the, it also comes with uh, a short 16 and a half inch uh, hammer forged cold steel barrel and uh, uh, it's very lightweight right at about six and a half pounds. Cooper wanted something that you could carry around all day that wasn't going to be terribly heavy, and it fits into its own real genre of just an everyday rifle. One of the things that sets it apart is it actually comes from the factory with front and rear sights, and a lot of sporting and hunting rifles uh, don't necessarily do that. They're meant for putting an optics package on right away. Cooper believed that anything that was optical or electronic could fail and when in doubt be able to go back to the iron sights and go back to basics. One of the things that really sets the Scout rifle apart from other earlier concepts is the fact that it had a forward mounted rail. And what the forward mounted rail was designed for was so that you could mount a low powered uh, optical scope forward of the ejection port and that way you would keep both eyes open as part of your technique which allows you to acquire your targets very quickly. However, what I did is I opted to go with a more of a conventional uh, scope that's located to the rear and uh, the, this particular rifle comes with uh, mounting bases that allow you to do that. So it has the versatility of either having a forward mounted low power or a rear mounted conventional high power. And there will be some people out there that say I butchered the rifle and I got away from Cooper's original intent, but Cooper's original intent was versatility and it was designed for versatility. And you can see at the rear here, these little cutouts here down below that little kind of a half moon shape, that's actually a place where the original Ruger rings would set up at the back. So this was designed to give you choices and I've made mine. Um, because of the way my particular eyes work and my particular comfort level, at this point, I like a conventional rear-mounted scope. Who's to say that someday I won't be, want to go with a forward-mounted scope? And I have the versatility to change my mind and have different optics packages or even just run the standard iron sights. So the Ruger Gunsight Scout also comes with a laminated wood stock 
and uh, that gives you good weight. The weight is going to also help soak up some of that recoil and you're going to get some recoil because you've got a short 308 uh, uh, barrel and so the trade-off with a shorter barrel is you're going to feel more recoil. Now Ruger designed this with uh, Cooper to be a short rifle, less than a meter, less than 40 inches long, so that you could carry it easily. It was made to be carried with a sling, so you could carry out in the field all day without getting fatigued. And uh, it's got a lot of really good practical features. Now, the accuracy was designed for being able to hit a man-sized target out at about 450 yards. It also has what we would call a detachable magazine, which is also a little bit different from a lot of other conventional rifles that might have an internal magazine. And you can get the detachable magazines, and this particular magazine is what's called an AICS pattern from Accuracy International. And this particular type of magazine can be had in either three, five, or ten round mags. Um, it comes with five rounders. I just happen to be able to lay hand on, hands on ten. And since uh, why would you go to the party with less than you need? Uh, I like the idea of having ten rounds rather than two fives. And I just kind of appreciate it more. Now, one of the things that also comes with is a... Uh, it comes with a muzzle device up front and the muzzle device is also designed to reduce some of the recoil. So we will put in the show notes all the different products that we've put on this, but it's designed to be a nice practical rifle. It's also available in the 223 or the 556. Um, I spent a lot of time struggling which one I wanted to get but I ended up landing on the, the 308, and I'm actually really glad that I did. You can also get this in a stainless. And um, for those of you that are, you know, left-handers or southpaws, you can even get a left-handed Ruger Gunsight Scout. They're out there. Um, those of you who pay attention know I like stainless, but I was able to get a good deal on a used one in the matte black finish, so I just decided to roll with it. You know, I didn't get stainless, but I don't really feel like I gave up too much anyway. So it's a great little rifle. Um, it's fun to shoot, and it's been on my bucket list for a long time, and I'm really glad that I had a chance to uh, check that off my list. But when we come right back, we're gonna put some rounds down range so you can see how this thing actually operates. All right, we're back with the Ruger Gunsight Scout. I just wanted to take a look through the optics and, and make sure that uh, I had the, the, the adjustment ring taken care of. Now, a uh, couple features, since you know, you're looking up close, as you can also see that we have a ghost ring sight right here to the rear. And if all else fails, you can take your optics off and still use the ghost ring. And I'm a huge fan of the ghost ring. Very intuitive. Um, you'll also notice from right here that this is where the safety is. So this is where your safety is, on or off. Pretty basic stuff. Now, it's worth noting that uh, for uh, unloading and loading, it, it, it works a little bit smoother if you've got the action open. And your magazine release is right down here by my finger. So you can kind of see how that works. It's in a, it's at a good um, intuitive place right next to the magazine, right behind it. And we've already uh, loaded up the magazine because you watched me load the magazine. And the box magazine is just gonna slide right in. And you'll hear the click. Doesn't hurt to give it a tap just to make sure that it's secured. And you can always take a look. Now, just like with every other uh, you know, bolt action or a lever action, you want to be deliberate in how you operate the action, all the way forward and all the way back. With that, the bolt is locked in. So, I'm going to get into my shooting position, and we are still in the process of getting this zeroed in uh, completely. Um, I still haven't got this completely dialed in, which is why we have the target up fairly close. Um, this also just makes it easier to video. So it's much easier to start by zeroing on a close target.
and save some ammo because you can get some immediate results to see what you're doing rather than having to look through uh, a secondary scope or binoculars to find out where you were hitting. I pulled that little one a little bit. My elevation is right. I'm just a little bit slightly to the right. And that could be me. You know, this is a fairly new rifle and uh, I'm excited to shoot it. So of course, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's hard to settle down and, and really be in the moment when you are just getting started with something new. That's better. So I know I need to pull to the left just a little bit, a couple of clicks. But if you're starting off by doing your zero at a closer target, you're going to get a much better product because you're going to spend less ammunition. Yeah, and it needs just a, a couple clicks to the left, but that's all right. It's thrown a consistent pattern, which is the most important thing to me. Now, generally what you want to do, especially when you're zeroing a rifle, when we're on video, we're doing more for fun than doing a really set zero. Fire three rounds, let it cool off, and shoot from a colder rifle. I pulled that one, that's me. The sights are always on, it's just not necessarily where you want them to be. And you're generally going to have the rifles always going to be more accurate than the shooter. There we go. And you know, there's no win or lose, there's win or learn. And the beauty of it is, is there's a lot worse things than being at the range, especially the mystery range, as beautiful as it is out here. So even if I'm not drilling them exactly the way I want, somebody's out there and having a worse day than me. And we just don't have bad days at the mystery range. It's not allowed. Like I got one or two more in there. And there's the beauty of the 10 round mag. Once you get going, you don't really have to stop. Outstanding, all right, we're safe, we're clear, we're empty. All right, I'm gonna unload the magazine. We can see that we are all completely visually unloaded. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk forward with it, take a look and see how we did. Well, I think that's a good example of practical accuracy. And I'm not gonna say the rifle's 100% dialed in, but I would say we're in the high 90s. And it's just a matter of a click here, a click there, and uh, we'll have it all squared away. Um, I can't say enough good things about the, the Ruger gun sight. Uh, Scout. I've wanted one for a long time and I feel like it was money well spent and now that I have it I hope I never have to turn loose of it. Anyway, we've really enjoyed doing this particular video and the staff and the, the crew that help us out here. I just want to thank everybody at Shoot of the Series for making this possible and also thank all of our loyal viewers that keep tuning in and, and, and spreading the word, being a part of our community. It's another beautiful day here at the Mystery Range, and my name is Ed Thorell from Shooter the Series. Y'all take care.